Justine, Fleming's beloved songstress. No one who has ever heard her sing opera has ever come back alive. She stands before Garcia, giving the sense of a huge boss fight to come, and the battle turns out to be 2D. And she's actually really girly on the inside, too. Look! What did I say? I do feel like they at least pace those out in ways where, like, usually it works out, so... It'll be like, hey, you're almost dead anyway, have a save point. Like, they kind of figured where everyone was getting their ass beat, and they figured it was a good... It didn't work! It was a good place to put them, or something like that. I don't like you guys right now, mostly, because I like playing video games, and I'm not doing it with you idiots. Like, the, the sitting around and waiting to play part, definitely not my style. The killing idiots part definitely is. But here we are, still waiting. Alright, so... Uh, these are just topics I've had on my phone forever. One of them was, um... Hurt so much. Like, look, I'm already dying again. Now I gotta fucking heal again. Um, one of them was, like, Jalen Showdown, just because one of my favorite things about that show was the idea that the bad guy would win sometimes, and he had to win some... Oh, I gotta find a chip. He had to win sometimes in order to keep things going along. And, you know, it made sense, and I liked it. And that's kind of a, a thing I think about, because one of the things, like, let's say with just Pokemon, it, for example, is, like... When has Team Rocket ever achieved anything? Very little. But, as I've been watching through the anime, uh, it's actually kind of trippy to see Jesse um, winning contests in Sinnoh just on her own. And it's like, whoa, they're actually giving her something. And it's like, it, you know, it makes sense. Like, they have to be able to gain experience and become experienced in some way, whether they're the bad guy or not. Like, it, that's just kind of how things happen, you know? But it feels like very few shows acknowledge something like that, where the enemy can be strong and achieve things. So when it actually does do that, then it becomes unpredictable. And you, you become more invested, and you're like, well, I don't know who's going to win. I don't know the outcome of what's going to happen. And that becomes easier to invest in when you have that thing. Because when it's just like, oh, well, I know the they're, you know, they're going to beat up Team Rocket, it's like, well, why am I even going to watch it? Because I already know the outcome. Let's see if we can uh, do that real quick. Yeah, see, there was a little tiger doodle. He showed up and he made a tiger. Which also, I guess if they ever did put traps in them like yours, maybe they could use the tiger as his logo. I don't know if they would. Uh, I mean, that is in use the tiger, because I feel like they'd probably strive for something different, but it's like, I suppose they could if they wanted to. It would be a thing I would associate with him. And I feel as a. Um, identifiable like what else is there other than like his beam katana or I guess if you wanted to do his face which here's the thing because it kind of resembles Travis in a way I'm seeing a lot of fucking people online with logos that it's like spiky hair and glasses and I'm beginning to think everybody in the entire fucking world looks like that or something because get out of the ground Tired of you wasting my shit. I'm dying here, and you're just fucking off. Basically, the point though is like, why does everybody suddenly have spiky hair and glasses, and that's their logo, and it's a minimalist style, and it's just that? Like Benjamin Briggs, look him up. That he does the remixes, and like his logo, I've seen at least three people use, and it's the same thing. They all have the exact same look. All you motherfuckers out there are busy looking the same. And if you did that with Travis, he'd look the exact same too. The thing that says Travis apart is his glasses are yellow. But the thing is, if you're doing that in a minimalist style logo, it's going to appear black. Unless, I guess, if you wanted to make it yellow, but at that point you're adding colors to it. So I don't know. The point is, a, a black logo like that, everyone's going to look the fucking same. That's what's getting on my nerves, is everybody looking the fucking same. Get out of here! I was just about to use the shock, and he used it anyway. Because I inputted the button in 
I guess it just remembered. It's like, hey, you wanted to use this five minutes ago, right? Let's use it now. No, 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 no. I'm done now. I remember the button combination, though. That's okay. It's We're fine. Another damned favorite. The Sisters Grimm. You'd never think they were sisters without being told these Reapers. Without being told. These Reapers, their names are Maris, Colleen, and Glyth Grimm. Somehow you're supposed to work the fact that they're sisters just by adding those names, which is kind of... I'm gonna die now. Who are you? Has eight hearts come back? Just a super badass assassin. Badass, huh? You think you're badass enough to beat a sheep? Enough bullshit. Let's do this. It's your fifth trial, punk. You know what makes a mid-boss really terrifying? Getting harder and harder. Die! I'll show you what badass means. I'm gonna crush your ass. I think... Probably one of the things that bothers me less about the way Travis talks is it feels more natural. I mean, in the case of what he just said where he's like, super badass, I'm a beat your ass, maybe not that example, but at least in this, in this game in particular, like when he talks, it sounds like something an actual human would say. Like, obviously this isn't the case for every single line of dialogue, period. But I'm going to say at least 60% of it. Like, it's something I could hear somebody actually say. I didn't die! Hooray! I'm gonna heal now, because I don't trust my luck. I should charge my beam katana as well. Hooray! I also kind of like the floor, because it looks like dominoes. I don't know if that was the point, but it does. Also, let me check that chip, just out of curiosity, because I haven't checked the chip. I mean, it's been a while since I've played this game, if I'm being honest, so... I don't quite remember the last time we checked the chips. But it'll have an exclamation point, if so, which is just this one. It's been like a top, unleashing mobile rapid fire, so Beyblade. Um, I'm fine with what I got. I apologize if that's a problem, but... Sorry, I wanted to write down that I talked about this so this way I know to take it off my list. And there's a fucking toilet. Elliot the Beast, the term Psycho was created just for that guy. He kills, chops, flays, and eats. He was probably the biggest psycho out of Fleming's baddies. C-A-C-R-A-Z-Y crazy. Well... I think the weirdest part about that was the fact that it's like, if I were to spell crazy, I would have done it like that too, but I still somehow tripped over it. <laughs> um, so here's another thing that's semi-related. I guess we can talk about other games that it's like I'm interested in. Um, considering, because here's... It's a bit of a long tangent on this one. So, a game that I... I never cared for back when McFuggle showed me. It was the Yakuza series. And they're up to, like, I think five or something now? Four or five? I, yeah. And in number four, there's a boss fight against Takeshi. Beat Takeshi, as most people know him. And I think the idea of that is so fucking cool. Because I was pretty um, big into, as you Americans call it, MXC. In UK, it's a totally different show called Takeshi's Castle. And it's not nearly as much of a parody as it is, and with less dick jokes. So, it's still the same basic format where they take the whole Japanese show of it and then just, like, watch it and laugh at silly Japanese people doing silly Japanese people things. But, like, it, it felt more like an actual game show than it did, like, a, I don't know, a Retsupre, so to speak. And, yeah, I don't know. That's basically just the best way of describing it. So I love that show as a kid, and that's the way I'm always going to think of it as. I'm always going to prefer it over MXC. It also didn't have um, the um, those two guards doing the commentary. It was an English comedian by the name of Craig Charles, if I remember his name correctly. 
And he was the one just doing all the commentary. You guys need to piss off, please. So, and they, they NXT also never showed the final battle either. Because what was supposed to happen was when they got to the end, they were supposed to battle against Takeshi. And they do like the little thing where they're in the tanks and they shoot lasers at each other. Or they shoot water gun at each other. But they never showed that in MXC. And I never understood why. I thought it was weird. It was just like, here's random compilations we've taken through things. As to where like, in Takeshi's castle, the goal was you have a hundred people. Here's, they're going to try these challenges and people are going to fail and the winners move on to the next. And truth be told, I'm not entirely sure I believe that every single one of those people actually won. They probably just picked some and said, yeah, you can go ahead and go through because we still need people. I don't remember. I think there might have been a few examples where nobody actually survived long enough to reach Takeshi. I think. But, um... Yeah, for the most part, that was the way it was an elimination game show, not a piss take. So, I want to go up here first, because that's a dead end. It's not a dead end! Oh my god, I've been deceived! Travis, what do we do? Travis, we did the right thing. We got a coin that we don't need, because we already have everything unlocked. Actually, you know what, I should... Is there a way I can check the ramen from here? Okay, so it says we're only missing three ramen. Because that's really the only thing I would consider as far as different when it comes to completion in this game, is gene and ramen. In other words, it's like, yeah, I, I completed it, so... Even if we don't show all the ramen and the LP, I'll probably just do it on my own and then just mark it off as complete on my backloggery. Because here's another thing that I kind of don't like about modern games is they're so goddamn difficult to complete. Every game is like, do you want 100% completion? Devote your life to me. And it's like, I'm never gonna ever be able to fucking get, like, 100% completion in something like... Breath of the Wild because I have to fucking marry the game, and that's just dumb and annoying, and I don't want to do that. I feel like, I think I did enough time as is clearing Breath of the Wild. I was quite happy with it, but they're like, oh no, no, you gotta find the literal pieces of shit. That's dumb. And then, like, with Odyssey, apparently you can buy, like, a thousand moons. Like, I would just consider completing the checklist 100% enough, but no! Fucking get coins and buy shit, like, why? What else, what else is stupid and has unreasonable demands? I need to think for a second while I look at this. I think I could say Smash Brothers. Ramen fit for the gods. The seafood-based broth provides a hint of class. So, Smash Brothers would be another good example, especially if you wanted to compare, like, in general, and they've always kind of been like this with, um, ever since Melee, like, getting all the trophies, or the stickers, or the spirits, and it's just, like, it's too fucking much. Like, they're asking so goddamn much of you. And I like being a completionist. I like saying I got everything done. Hyrule Warriors! There's another perfect example. I believe the completionist did an episode on it, and he said, like, it was, like, a few hundred hours or some shit. Like... Mortal Kombat 11. You're never gonna unlock all the fucking skins. Tough shit. Like, um, but going on, because I wanted to mention this, because I'm just curious, and I imagine, and I don't think many, most people know about this, but it's actually impossible to 100% Smash Brothers Melee without hacking it. Like, there's two, I mean, I guess you could say this for a lot of things, really. There's two trophies that are only Japan exclusive, but you can hack them in, and it's Samus without her helmet and Mario riding Yoshi. There's technically 292 trophies in the game, but, like, after you reach, like, 270, the percentage, when you go to the lottery, it just switches over to 0% chance of getting a new trophy. And I know Pikmin is one that requires you to uh, have a save data in order to unlock that trophy. But, um, the, the two I mentioned, the Mario and Samus one, like, those, you can hack them in, sure, but, like, those were Japan-exclusive unlocks, and that was it. Which makes it extra funny, because they're in the North American versions, but... 
That's kind of what I mean, and it's like, I still don't have Brawl completed, especially with those challenges and stuff, and it's like, that's kind of why I don't necessarily feel bad about, like, an action replay and just hacking shit in saying, yep, that's good enough, because, like, fuck. The amount of time and work required on something like this, where it gives you so much stuff to do, and it's just, like, I appreciate giving me my bang for my buck. Don't get me wrong, I do. That's a very courteous thought. But I do feel like there is too much of something. And I commented this on like a lot of games when I LP them, is it's like, yeah, this is a good length game. This is a fine length game. Uh, Mario vs. Rabbids, there's another example. Like, they have a challenge level for everything. So if you want to get 100% completion, you beat the game twice. And then do the hard levels. And it's like, that's a lot of fucking work. <laughs> 